Good morning. It is October 9th. It is the middle of the week. It is Wednesday. 2013 is the year if you're keeping up with that sort of thing. <laughs> this is Wayne's Gold, Wayne Goldsboro Television, and I'm Wayne Alley. And who are you? Good morning. I'm Kim Best. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh boy, what a great day in the middle of the week already. We're on our way to a beautiful weekend again. The weather is just outstanding. It is. We're loving this oh, fall weather. Boy, I'm telling you, it is so nice. And it's here that it is. time of year. Yeah, October, and that's about the time that the leaves are changing, mm -hmm. especially in the mountains. And people just migrate to the mountains of North Carolina this time of year to enjoy the beautiful And you can't blame colors. them. Can't blame them at all. But you know, right here in Wayne County, we have beautiful leaves too. They'll start changing and, oh my goodness, I know I've driven down uh, Spence Avenue and various yeah. other places and you look and it, within just a matter of weeks, those leaves are going to start turning sort of a gold color yes. and then they get a little more red and it really is beautiful. And if you can find kind of a high point, uh, a hill or something like that, look out over mm. an area of trees, you'll see that color change. It's just, I love this time of year. That's the wonderful thing about North Carolina. It we is. do have typically four different seasons. Typically we do. Typically we do. <laughs> I mean, you, well, think about it. You know, if you lived in, in somewhere where it was warm all the time right. or cold all the time, you couldn't feel the couldn't differences have, and appreciate them. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't appreciate the change in That's temperature right. and how much we enjoy it here in North Carolina. And we do. What do you have there? I have an event coming up at Wayne Memorial Hospital. It is uh, tomorrow. My goodness. Thursday, October the 10th. It's okay. called Splashes of Pink. Okay. This is best, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness. It's because awareness goes with everything. It's what they're saying. Wear your favorite pink attire and join us for an evening of breast cancer awareness and education. It's on the front lawn of Wayne Memorial Hospital. This is their first time holding this event. I'm sure it will be very nice. It start at six, starts at 6 p.m. There's a question and answer se session. I <laughs> can't talk today. <laughs> You'll have three or four different physicians that will be talking about breast cancer and you'll be having some uh, breast cancer survivors mm -hmm. talking, and the whole night is going to be fantastic. Let's see. The event is free. Seating is limited. They want you to call in advance, so you better call today. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. To reserve your seat and for one of your friends, you can call 731-6299. 731-6299. Splashes of Pink. You know, I, I don't want to get into listing all the doctors who are going to be there to help people, but that's quite an impressive panel. Is it not? Several uh, extremely well-known physicians and doctors and surgeons and uh, a little bit of everybody is going to be there. That's right. Uh, again, I, I want to start mentioning names, but I better not because I can't pronounce them all, plus I, <laughs> I'd leave somebody out. Well, they're going to have a healthy, light dinner. Mm -hmm. They're going to talk to you about scheduling your mammogram. You're going to meet some breast cancer survivors. Enjoy some girl time with your friends and guy time if you so choose. But this is on the front lawn of Wayne Memorial Hospital tomorrow night, October the 10th. 6 o'clock p.m. Would love to have you join us. Splashes of pink. Splashes of pink. Yeah, so call out there today. And That's right. Reserve your seat. Yes, indeed. Well, let's take a look at birthdays here very quickly. A birthday right. today for a very, very popular North Carolina world-famous singer. Who might that be? It might be Scotty McCreary. Well, happy birthday, Scotty. And you know, How old is he turning, like 20 or 21? I, well, no, but you're closer than I would have been. I had no idea he's 19 years old today. I thought he was about my son's age, somewhere around there. I had no idea. I'm amazed. Yeah, he's, he's a young I, kid. I thought he was a lot older than no, that. No, he's just a freshman in college at State. Yeah. If I suppose if I had watched the program, I would know these well, things. Well, no, that might would help, actually. All I see him is on a Hardy's commercial or something. Bojangles. Bojangles. My Bojangles. goodness, it's I, Bojangles. Excuse me. <laughs> He is a huge Bojangles fan. He is there. Every commercial they have, he is the face. Yeah, and you, and I remember, I see it on the commercial, and I hear him say, Ooh, or something like that. Something a little Don't different. Don't quote me, yeah, something like that. Uh, Sharon Osborne's having a birthday today. Beautiful lady. She is 60 today, uh, and very funny. She is hilarious. She is funny. And very supportive of her children. You know, her son is on Dancing with the Stars right now. Is he? And his, her daughter used to be. I didn't know that. Yes, and she is there each week. Now, you know, she and, and Ozzy and the family did a, had a show yes, on they TV. Did. And it was family jewels, I believe, funnier was than I ever thought it would have been. It's a very funny show. And yeah. good. Very entertaining. Uh, one of my favorite actors, a guy named Tony Shalhoub. Monk. That's right. Uh. Monk is 59 years today, and he is so talented. He can do anything. He can. He's uh, best known for his uh, character, Monk, but he's done many other things as well. 
he was on a program called Wings, where he played a Hispanic character. I remember that. Remember that? He taxi was a, driver he was a mechanic. or something. Uh -huh. he, yeah, mechanic. And he also did a taxi driver in some show. But anyway, uh, Scott Bakula turns 58 today. Brandon Youth, who was... Uh, who played Superman in Superman Returns. He's 33 today. Jackson Brown oh, yes. is 64 years today. I don't think that's right. He's, he's 65 today. Also a birthday <laughs> today for Steve Burns. He's another one of my favorite people. Steve Burns, you may recall, was the co-creator and original host of Blue's Clues. Oh, wow. Very talented guy. Uh, Vav Voom, Annika Sorenstam is having a birthday today. 42 years of age. Arguably the most successful female golfer in history. Uh, Zachary Ty Bryan was on, uh, uh, bless you, was on, uh, uh, played Tim, Tim Taylor's son on Home Improvement. Oh, yeah. And another one of my favorite actors, John O'Hurley. And in fact, I had to add him to this list. He wasn't even on this list. Well, John tell us how we know him. John O'Hurley, you know from many places. Okay. Uh, Young and the Restless. He played Cricket's father. He uh, okay. was All My Children. He was on that. He, all, he does that and he does voiceovers. He was on Scooby-Doo and he was on uh, Looney Tunes. White hair, good looking guy, very talented. He is 59 years today. He plays uh, Jay Peterman on Seinfeld. Okay. Okay. Who was a real person, by the way and portrayed him and then when they found out about it uh, they asked him to buy part of the company the company was going bankrupt wow. he bought into the company and then all of a sudden started turning a profit i bet so a funny story <laughs> anyway he's 59 years today well happy birthday happy, if it's happy. your special day <laughs> all right well i think we better head on to our interviews mr alley so hey. stay with us here we go joining me in the studio today is paige lerner she is the director of crime stoppers here in goldsboro and wayne county She's here to talk about the crimes of the week and how we need your help. Good morning, Paige, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. So you have two separate incidents, and I you do. have pictures for both. I do. All right, if you'll tell us about the first crime of the week. The first one is about Cornelius Jones. Actually, on September 17th, Mr. Jones broke into a vehicle on a 2500 block of East Ash Street. We had a woman who went in to, to work out at a gym, locked her car up like we asked the public to do. Uh, while she was in a gym working out, Mr. Jones broke into the vehicle and stole her purse and stole some items. Um, used those items and we were able to track them down. We have outstanding warrants for him uh, for breaking into a motor vehicle. So we're hoping the public will take a look at his picture and tell us where he's at um, and help us locate him. And what is the best thing to do for the community if they were to see him out and about in our community? If you see Mr. Jones and you know him and you're looking at him, you know, you, it's okay for them to call 911, call dispatch and say, hey, you guys have warrants on Cornelius Jones. I'm looking at him or he's driving this vehicle right now. It's okay to do that. What they might do is just flip him over to a non-emergency line. But if they have their eyes on him, it's, it's fine. If it's just information that they want to tell us that, hey, this is where they think he's staying or where we might can find him, uh, I'd ask that they call the Crime Stoppers line and give me that information. And I believe we've just had that up on the screen. So right. you have both the text number and the call number. Yeah, and that is Cornelius Jones. He's actually 26 years old. He's six foot one and 190 pounds. His address is in the 2201 Royal Avenue, if anybody is familiar with him. Very good. All right, we need your help on that. So if you see him, give them a call. They need your help. And the crime of the week number two? Yep. That is a second individual what they'll be looking at. This is a gentleman by the name of Dontrell Lewis. On the, um, September 13th of this year, Mr. Lewis and another black male broke into a residence which is actually located at 708B North Claiborne Street here in town. They broke into the residence while people were home. They assaulted the resident that lived in the home and they stole the television. They stole some cash from the home. Um, and so we have active warrants on him for first degree burglary. We're also asking the public for their help in locating the second subject. Uh, we do not have warrants on that individual. We're wanting any information that the, the public might have on that, but we do have warrants for burglary for Dontrell Lewis. And Dontrell is 20 and he last resided at 409B Herman Street. Okay, once again, you see the Crime Stoppers numbers and the text on the screen. Either one of these individuals, if you have seen them or if you do see them in the next few days, we would appreciate if you're actually looking at them at the point in time, you can call 911. If you just have information you would like to give to Crime Stoppers, you can text or call that number. You could be eligible for a cash reward. And of course, this is helping your community solve these two crimes of the week. Thank you, Paige. We appreciate you Thank coming you. in. We want your help. Thank you so much for listening and give us a call if you see either of these individuals. This is Crime Stoppers.
your source for what's happening in your community, is Wayne Goldsboro Television. In the studio with us today is Sheriff of Wayne County, Sheriff Kerry Windows. How you doing? Doing fine, except for this. Uh, except for that. Yeah, what in the world? What does the other guy look like? Well, that's what somebody asked me the other day. No, I had rotator cuff surgery. And, oh, okay. Uh, had an extensive tear, so it's, it's yeah. had about three weeks ago uh, mm -hmm. surgery on it, so I hadn't done the rehabilitation yet. Oh, okay. Well, be glad I, to get out of the sling, though, because uh, having to learn how to sleep in a recliner is tough. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, it's not as, you get used to it. Let me pry. Well, I don't <laughs> like it. I'd rather be in the bed. I understand that. Well, Sheriff, I appreciate you coming in and talking to us today. And uh, first of all, I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, what's going on with the Sheriff's Department. Anything new in the Sheriff's Department? I know there's recently been some work done there in the Sheriff's Office. Yes, uh, uh, we, we, you know, of course, we've done our core report. Of course, I don't know if many people know. We haven't really put that out there a lot, too. Of course, we have a, another helicopter online. Yeah. Uh, the Nighthawk, and uh, of course we have got funding from the feds and and the state uh, mm -hmm. basically to do eradication. So we're flying to some other counties and we're paid paid to do that. Mm -hmm. So let you know we are getting paid. And again, as I want to make sure re reiterate it, you know, no county tax dollars are used to maintain the operation of it, except for the pilot. Right. But now getting back to some other things we're working on, we know we've experienced, you know. Just like this week, you know, you've seen the shootings, uh, uh, shootings, mass shootings involving, you know, this, especially in school shootings. Right. And uh, I know we've had people to ask, well, have we done anything different? Are we doing anything different? The schools have been working with the school administration. In fact, they uh, provide another, actually, uh, another hundred thousand dollars to help pay for to help pay for the full-time school resource officers. Mm -hmm. We have in all the high schools, mm -hmm. uh, but one thing they've done also is that we've done to another initiative. Uh, shortly after those other shootings, we do have two that roam in the middle schools uh, areas. Two, two, right, two, two officers. Two officers, two deputies that roam the middle school areas, right. and then I have three retired deputies who work the elementary schools. Okay. So. All right. We've got that going, so our schools, basically, we're trying to cover those schools the best we can. Yeah. Don't have any, but like I said, they are part-time. So that is something we're doing uh, there to, to protect, you know, give us a uh, sense of security to the parents that we are out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with budget restraints, you have to be uh, inventive. Uh, uh, <laughs> creative. Creative yeah. or whatever yeah. you can do. Oh, yeah. Now, you mentioned the helicopter. We've got another helicopter coming. Yes, sir. And the, uh, you mentioned the expense of the helicopter is taken care of by the state and the federal government. No, it was taken care of by drug seizures. By drug seizures? I see. So what's it going to cost the county taxpayer? The taxpayer doesn't pay anything, but we got a pilot, you know, and yeah. his salary, that's about all. And, and that's, that's it. We're that's, not, well, we're that not, is it. We're not buying a helicopter or anything. You don't buy the insurance, you don't buy the fuel, you don't buy I mean, the hangar, rent. Mm -hmm. All, that's All the parts and repairs, nothing like that. That's covered with drug seizure money. And yeah, and, drug uh, and of course, then the other aspect of it is we are being paid by the feds and the state to be on the interdiction level. That means we are joining with a group. Uh, we are flying in other counties, surrounding counties. We've agreed to fly around surrounding counties yeah. at a fee, and I believe it's either four or five hundred dollars an hour. Four or five hundred dollars an hour is paid to Wayne County. It was paid to the sheriff's office paid to the, the helicopter. Sheriff's office. I beg your pardon. Paid to the sheriff's office. No, it's office. not. It's paid. And you it caught go, that, didn't you? <laughs> it goes to the helicopter. It goes to the helicopter. Okay. But now, uh, uh, but now this is to help fight uh, uh, drugs in, in it, uh, surrounding counties right. and in Wayne drug, County. Drug interdiction. I mean, uh, drug you know, eradication. Eradication, yeah. Um, and also with the other helicopter we have, yeah. you know, we have two. Yeah. One has a night sun, which is able to show a big light, spotlight. Yeah. But the other one is also equipped with infrared flare system. So, okay. That now, means and aside from drug inter interdiction and aside from uh, flying and, and looking for the for the drugs, how else is our helicopter used? Well, we uh, we have been on missions for looking for missing persons, persons with Alzheimer's, children that have been lost. We have done that system when they've had other calls. When we've been up, you may have some calls that uh, we have done that with some calls breaking and entering and. Mm -hmm. They are in the area or can get there real quick and look in the area, secure that area, look around. Uh, we have helped other cannons, of course, right. uh, for that. <coughs> um, 
Also, we recently got them trained with the dogs. Uh, our canine units, unlike me, are not afraid to fly. <laughs> so the, the dogs can are trained to get in the helicopter right. and fly and be. They are. Yes, and that, I mean, not not fly in the helicopter, but fly in the helicopter. Fly in the helicopter with it with the, with okay. the uh, officer. That way, they can be immediately deployed somewhere right. quickly. And of course, you know our canine units are trained not only just to do article search and drug search, but also cadaver searches. Right. Okay. That means you know searching for bodies or and searching for living people too. You know, yeah. and tracking. Recently, in the news uh, paper, I've noticed that some of our, uh, they've had the town meetings. And some have brought up the, uh, the thing that they didn't think, you know, that they hadn't seen many deputies in some towns. Or they didn't understand, well, we pay city tax and county tax. Why come we got to have a police force if we're paying both? Right. Well, that's totally up to a, it is totally up to a city or town to have their police force. And in fact, most, when they're charged, require that they provide services such as fire, law enforcement, and whatever, trash pickup, whatever. Some don't, mm -hmm. but uh, we have a few towns that doesn't have can't afford law, law enforcement. We have some that have a limited force, and we do supply deputies. You know, we we answer the calls, take reports. Probably aspect they don't look at is that when they have a major crime, we're there supplying the investigators, the crime scene decks, uh, technicians. We're also working the drugs in some of these towns. Right. Most of them in the towns, uh, a drug element, and you know. Even though you may not see a deputy, you know, of course, you know, they'd be standing in the yard. And like I said, I went through one, one town and uh, I think I saw three people standing in the yard, but that was only three people that would even could have seen a deputy that day at that certain time. And I was out of several hours. So there are deputies patrolling. Some are patrolling unmarked. That's not including you, you know, your undercover cars, your detective cars, or whatever. And we have some that come through all the time, stopping at businesses or whatever, do. So, and what a lot of them didn't realize too, some people didn't realize that <coughs> in the sheriff's office, you know, I do get that call, uh, why is a deputy, why, we're paying, and I see the deputy sheriff riding around in the city of Goldsboro or uh, the Fremont when he should be out here in the county patrol. And people don't realize that that deputy sheriff, we have a certain unit, uh, civil division on it, which is you know, deputy's a deputy. They're serving the civil papers, eviction notices, divorce papers, any civil process. That is, by law, the sheriff deputy has to serve that. Not a police officer, not a high patrol, but a deputy sheriff has to serve those type papers, so lawsuits. It's not like on TV. So when you see those deputies out, that's what they're doing. <laughs> that's they're what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. When they see them in the towns, uh, yeah. that's what they're doing. Right. And we have a warrant squad, too, child support, for okay. example. Right. Child support has to be served by us. So we served child support once. So uh, that's the concept. Things people just didn't know that we try to explain. So, well, I didn't realize that. Yep. If you just, you know, if you want to ask something, just call. So uh, before they start complaining about it, call and ask. All you got to do is call me. We'll tell call you. and ask. Uh, all right. Well, let me ask you this then. We're almost out of time here. Uh, there's, around the world, there's so much violence going on right now, and you hear more about it every day. Uh, and of course, here in our own backyard, we are, there's no place safe uh, anymore. And I know you guys are doing all you can do, uh, and you are privy to information, but uh, we don't want to ask you about right. that. I just want you to uh, assure us that uh, as, uh, as uh, leading law enforcement in Wayne County, uh, that uh, if there is a problem with gangs, that you're aware of it, you're knowing, you know about it, and you're taking care of it. We know about the gangs. We, are, uh, we keep tabs on them. We, uh and even in the jail when they're arrested. Uh, certainly had to do that because you got to separate them. But uh, we have a we have people that are certified gang, that's been to gang school and that work with a federal task force, so we keep up with those gangs. There's a gang school? Uh, yeah, you can get a- Is that a, right? Yeah, there's- Law a, enforcement a, 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 can law go to gang school. Investigators on, on, My on gangs, yes sir. Yeah. Training, training on gangs. All right. What to look for, um, how to distinguish even, you know, gangs have their some gangs, such as the Crips and Bloods, mm -hmm. have their own signs and signals. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, they do. Yeah. And a lot of times we do some training videos that even show a gang member giving a signal to attack an officer. Uh -huh. Just a simple movement. Uh -huh. And uh, if he's the gang leader. So we, uh, 
it, it is it is out here. Um, I've heard the term, and I've used that term, want to be one time, but don't let anybody fool you. They're still affiliated with some of them, and I want to be is just as dangerous. If you want to call them on a base, mm -hmm. that's just as dangerous as the real deal. That's the real deal. Yeah, because they're, they're trying to get there. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get to that level. Right. And you may have someone that was a a nobody in the, in, in, the, in the real games who's moved here, and all of a sudden he's a somebody. Trying to be somebody. somebody. So if anyone is aware of any sort of gang activity, the best thing to do is not confront them, but call the no. sheriff's office. Call the sheriff's office. Sure do. All right. Um, All right. Good. I hope I've answered a lot of questions you, this you, morning. We've covered, we'll, a of ground, covered a lot of ground. I've covered a lot of ground. I want you to come back soon, okay? We will. And, and uh, take care of that arm. Of course, we'll I hope we'll come back next time and be able to talk about the, uh, I know tomorrow we have a meeting on the detention uh, center, jail center committee. Right. Uh, we're working on the yeah. possibility and hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, that we can get the prison out there. Also, we want to make sure and hope that it's not going to cost a lot to renovate it. Right. We're hoping that the county that will save some county some money, but rest assured there will be have to be some money spent. Oh yeah. Well, we're talking in the long run. We're talking about uh, a facility that's available out near Cherry Hospital. That's a, it's a prison that's that the state's going to close down, and there's a possibility that the county could get that part of that property. Right. And moving into it, people don't understand either. And that's something probably, and I want to tell you real quick. And people say, well, we got that prison. We can take prisoners and immediately start putting them right there. You would think that. And you would automatically think that. Yeah. But keep in mind, North Carolina has a jail standards commission. Right. Which you've right. got to meet. Now, the prison does not. They don't have the same standards. No. Okay. And whatever the jail and the prison are two different right. Uh, two different things. So that would have to be updated or upgraded. Yeah, it would have to All meet right. jail standards, right. the current jail standards in North Carolina. All right. Then that, that well, might not be that expensive, but it may. We don't know. Haven't, haven't been out there and looked yet, and that's hopefully we'll be out there on September 30th right. to look around. And I think that's why the county is going to have to hire, hire somebody to make an accessibility on, on it. Okay, well, more to come on that. And our guest today has been Sheriff Kerry Winders, the High Sheriff of Wayne County, and I appreciate you coming in and talking to us. <music>
Uh, coming up, East Point Geriatric Adult Mental Health Specialty Team will be offering caregiver classes at the Peggy M. Seeger Senior Center. These caregiver classes are held on the fourth Monday of each month the fourth Monday from 5.30 until 6.30. These are caregiver classes now. October's class will be held October 28th. October 28th at 5.30, these are hour-long classes geared for those who are caring for or have interest in the geriatric population. Classes are free of charge. One hour of continuing education will be given for each participant at the end of class. Now, October's topic will be effective communication with the elderly. There's no charge or age requirement for the class. For more information, call Aaron McAuliffe at 705-1785, 705-1785. And please, if you feel that you have someone in your family who may have a problem that stems from a possibility of some sort of mental health issue, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. And you can go on to the Mental Health Association of Wayne County's website and there's actually a page on there that you can a test you can take to kind of help you out and there's phone numbers of all kinds but please don't let this thing go on if you have a problem and issue of any kind there's so many different degrees of mental illness or mental health issues starting with uh, gee uh, what people would call simple depression it's not all that simple especially if you have it or suffer from it so please do something talk about it take the test call someone that's right I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get off my soapbox here. I want okay? to remind you, as part of our fall jazz gumbo, on Monday night at October the 14th at 7 o'clock p.m., Bill Meyer and the Monitors oh boy. will be talking and playing all about jazz music. Armstrong, Ellington, Parker, and guess what? It's just been announced that he will be a 2014 North Carolina Heritage Award nominee. Really? Absolutely. So oh, Bill nothing. Meyer, right there from Wilson, North Carolina. Yeah. He and the monitors will be at the Paramount Theater. If you want to come out and see them, you better get your tickets now. Call the Paramount mm. Theater, 7 o'clock p.m., oh, yeah. Monday night. All the part of our fall gumbo. Yeah, love me some, uh, I love all those guys. Uh, Satchmo, uh, uh, Louis Armstrong, uh, Duke Ellington, all those guys. The, have Love all that it. fantastic music where you can sit in those wonderful, comfortable seats, sit back, relax, and just enjoy the music Monday night, October yeah. the 14th. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. <laughs> there you go. All right, I believe it's time for a wrap today. Is that it for today? That is all it for right. today. We just got here. I know. I it know. goes by so fast. So but thank you so much yeah. for being with us today. Once again, this is Wayne Goldsboro Television, and I'm Kim Best. I'm Wayne Alley. Until tomorrow, I'm Wayne Alley. There you go. <laughs> and this is what's happening in your community. <laughs>